Sunset waves, pools and nettys, trout are rising for the mayfly. And the sun is shining down on the valley. Hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Well, some folks like horses, cats or dogs. Me, I like fishing with a rod and a fly. Yes, fishing is favorite pastime of mine. If I couldn't do it, I think I would cry. Well, life is good when I'm wading a river. It gets even better when I cast a fly. If I catch a trout, it don't really matter. It's fun just to be here and give it a try. Has thought out the long bitter winter. The water is clear and the skies are blue. I'm standing in the middle of the Delaware River. Might even catch and release one or two. Stone flies and caddis in the ripples are plenty. Mayflies according on fragrant breeze. The cedar wax wings come down from the heavens. Wait for their dinner up in the pine trees. A trout is rising in the far eddy. I make a false cast, then take my aim. If he takes the fly, I'd feel so much better. And if he doesn't, I'll feel no shame. The water is cold and my waders leap. It's raining now. On my favorite stream I'll bear it all Just to fish with a feather So when I sleep I will have a sweet dream Life is good When I'm wading a river It gets even better When I cast a fly If I catch a trout It don't really matter It's fun just to be here And give it a try Oh, ripples and waves, pools and eddies, trout are rising for the dry fly. The sun is shining down on the valley, hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Yes, I hope to be a fly fish to the day that I die. Hey folks, welcome to today's show. My name is Kurt Nelson and I'm the host here at Riffles and Waves. Over the last few weeks I hope you've been joining me for my show and I hope you learned a lot of things about fly fishing or fishing in general. Don't be afraid to ask questions online at avkurt at mac.com and if you get your questions in soon enough I'll try to get those uh, answer those questions on the air. I won't use your name or anything, but I'll try to answer your questions. Is, uh, and if I can't get them on the show, I'll answer them uh, with a response by email. So don't be afraid to ask a question or two. Now, uh, today's show, like all the shows, I've tried to do something different each time. And in the world of fly fishing, there's a lot of different things you can do. I mean, there's, it just goes on forever. So hopefully I'll have enough material for the show for a long, long time. But today, we're going to cover knots, and specifically the knots used to put your fly gear together so you can go fishing. And a lot of folks say, gee, it's awful confusing, Kurt. Look, oh, you got the backing, you got the line, you got the leader, you got the tippet. Come on, you know, what's with all that? Well, today I'm going to tell you, okay? And we're going to uh, get a tape out and make sure you record the show because I'm going to tie each knot very slowly and you can tie along with me so you can practice these knots and learn them. Uh, a lot of this material like the leader and the tippet is very fine uh, hair like uh, uh, material so it takes a lot of practice to be able to tie these knots so you're going to want to practice these knots and you're going to want to practice setting up your gear too because hey it's probably as this show airs it's probably fishing season. Uh, this show should probably air in April I think so fishing season is already upon us so you want to be sure you got this stuff set up right now we're going to start with the reel and the backing and we're going to tie an arbor knot 
the backing has a couple of different purposes. Number one, it takes up space on your reel so that you're not winding 50 million times to bring the fish in. It actually creates a bigger space so that it can reel slower. Uh, it also, uh, if you have a big fish on, the, the fly line itself is only about 27 yards, 30 yards long. So if you catch a big fish and he makes a run and it goes 30 yards, if you don't have backing on, you're going to run out and he's going to break off the fly and you're going to lose the fish. Um, but the fly line itself is 27 yards and I always put about 100 yards uh, at least of backing on a fly reel. And you can see here it's bright red, you know, that that's, shows you that. And um, so the backing is very important for those two reasons. Number one, it, it, it takes up space on your reel and makes it like a large arbor reel. And it also gives you running room if you catch a fairly large fish. The fly line and the fly line comes in a variety of different uh, types and I use mostly a weight forward 6 floating or 5-6 weight for a 5-6 weight rod. That's what they mean by a balanced outfit. If you have a 8 weight rod you need 8 weight fly line. Okay, It's pretty simple. Um, and I always look for the WF weight forward 6F. It would be 6, 7, 8 whatever your fly line weight is and F means floating. There's also sinking. There's sink tips and other types. For most fishing and streams around here, though, you can get away get away with just a floating fly line. A tapered uh, type floating fly line will work very well because you're going to use heavy nymphs that will sink down. Okay, so that's your fly line, and then we're going to do the nail knot, and we're going to tie on a leader material, and this is a leader system that I use. I tie my own leaders. This has all different uh, thicknesses and weights of leader material, and I tie them together using a blood knot. So I make my own leaders. I don't buy them. I buy a kit like this and make my own. But you can easily go out and buy a leader. Now, the reason you have this tippet on here, this is a, some more uh, tippet material, usually one or two pounds, you know, 5X, 6X, 7X, or, or uh, so, so forth. And that's the weight of that, okay? So you're going to use a tapered leader to here, tie a nail knot on with tippet material. The tippet material saves your leader. If you put a, if tie the fly right to the leader, you're going to change the fly. After a while, you're not going to have any leader left. And if you buy them at 2 or $3 a piece, that can get really expensive just to go fishing for a day. So I always carry tippet material in, in my fly vest. So I'm going to show you the blood knot. And we're also going to do the clinch knot. That's where you tie your fly to uh, the uh, tippet material and on the very end. So I want you to uh, stick around. I'm going to uh, uh, set it up now and I'm going to tie some of these knots. And I'm going to start with the arbor knot, which is your backing to your reel. Okay, we have the arbor knot. I'm going to go through the top of the reel. Come out the bottom here, so we're wrapped around the arbor of the reel, and you're going to go up over the that line, and back around, and then through back through that loop. Okay. So it's like a little overhand knot. Then you put an overhand knot in the end, and then you pull it tight. There's the arbor knot. That attaches the backing to the reel. Another way to view that is to pretend my hand is the arbor. Okay? So we're going to go around the arbor. We're going to go over the line and then back through the loop there. So if you look at it, see it's it's just an overhand knot around the line, okay? And then you tie a little overhand knot here, okay? So when it tightens, when this thing tightens right up, and the backing should uh, slide a lot better than that, it'll tighten right up, and that little knot won't be able to go through the other knot, and that tightens up, and that's your arbor knot. Okay.
The nail knot is used to tie your backing, your backing to your fly line and your tip, your leader to your fly line. Um, on the, on the, to the tie the backing to the fly line, they call, they also call it the needle knot. And that's where you actually run a needle up through the inside of the fly line and pull the backing up through and then tie the nail knot. But I don't think that's necessary. If you learn the nail knot, you'll be just fine. So what we'll do, I don't really have a nail here. I might. Uh, what I got is a little screwdriver. Okay, so here we go with the nail knot. Okay, this would be my nail. And we're going to put the uh, backing or the, the leader material on the front and you're gonna hold the fly line right on there and then you're gonna roll the backing around now this should be loose and you'll see why in a minute because we have to run the line back up through okay and once you get it on there now you're gonna run this up underneath all that material all those loops and get it to go under each loop and then try to get it through that one there you go so now you can kind of pull it tight you slide it off the nail and then you pull it tight and you and while you're pulling it tight you align it up so it's nice and neat and you have the nail knot Now comes an easy knot to tie. Now we're going to tie two pieces of a, a leader material about the same diameter together. Okay? So this is my leader, this is my tippet. So I'm going to tie a blood knot. And this is the easiest way to tie a blood knot in the world. You do an Take the two ends, tie an overhand knot. Very simple. Now, you push together and drop that so that it's down below. And this is the fun part. And you have the two top lines together like that. Now you just kind of hold those like that. And you wrap these two lines around each other. Twist them. Reach down inside. Pull that knot up through. And you got to do this while holding everything tight. And when you pull this tight, I can't pull it too tight because this thing, I'll never get it out of here. And it makes a really beautiful little blood knot. These two ends I would cut off right here, and that would be a nice little blood knot. But again, this material um, doesn't do it very well, okay? So let's try that again. This is the blood knot, okay? You're going to tie the two ends together. Okay, then you push the two together and pull back and you have two loops here. Now you wrap one around and you pull the knot up through that hole, okay, like so. And then you pull this all tight while holding everything tight, okay. And you get a beautiful little blood knot. Now you would tie cut this end off you would cut this tag end off you have a nice little blood knot okay now a way to tie a dropper is to take one piece of line okay push it together make a loop and wrap one one of the lines around the other reach down pull the loop up and you basically tie another blood knot and this stuff doesn't like to be pulled like that but you end up with a blood knot with a little loop. Now you could tie a dropper on there, like a nymph or something else. Okay? That's, that's tying your leader to leader material. You use the blood knot. Okay? But uh, here is our hook. Okay, it's a big hook. That's not your normal fly tying hook. Okay, but we're going to 
try to demonstrate the clinch knot, which is the simplest knot in the world for tying, well, one of the knots used for tying your fly to your leader material or your tippet material. And what you're going to do is take it and wrap it and twist those two around. And you should do it at least nine times. But again, this, this string is a little thick to be doing that. And then you just go through the little loop down here and pull that tight. Pull all the ends tight. And you get a nice little barrel knot kind of, kind of thing. Okay? That's your clinch knot. And you should do at least nine wraps around. And again, I can't do that with this material. Okay? So there's your hook. You wrap this around. You do at least nine twists around the line. And then you come back down here and you go and you go through this loop here at the very down by the eye of the hook now to do the improved clinch knot you make another loop here you're gonna pull that through there and then pull that tight that's the improved clinch knot and that has a little better hold than just the basic clinch knot you'll find that when you're casting a dry fly sometimes that knot will loosen up and you might lose your fly or if you catch a fish the, the knot comes loose so well, that's because you were casting with a bad knot again the clinch knot here's our hook I'm gonna wrap around there again nine times I can only do a few come back through the loop down here by the eye and then back through your your knot and then you're gonna pull that tight and you get a nice little barrel knot it's a barrel knot or a clinch knot okay so there you have it so we had our our we had our arbor knot it was up and over and back around and through that hole and then you tie an overhand knot in the end okay and when you pull this tight that knot won't go through that knot and when you pull it down tight it holds on the arbor the more you pull the tighter that gets on the arbor so you won't lose any fish if you use all your fly line let's see if we can get this knot out of here so that's the arbor knot then we did the nail knot okay we'll just pretend we have a nail this stuff is pretty thick we really don't need a nail do this we're gonna wrap around probably five or more times and again I can't do it because this material is kind of thick and this is for demonstrations it's what I use for demonstration is this thick stuff so you can see it if I did it with the real stuff you wouldn't be able to see it Oop, we pull it out Oop, get back in there you gotta keep your fly line on there and we pull those ends tight, pull them really tight, clip off the tag ends, you got a barrel knot. Or, I mean the nail knot, sorry. Okay? Then we did our blood knot. Okay? And these are about all the knots you need to know to go fly fish. Okay? We tied an overhand knot in the two ends. We push them together, pull them apart, wrap one of these around the other, and pull the knot up through the hole, pull tight. You got a nail knot. You cut this tag end off, and you're all good to go. Another way to do a dropper is you do a nail knot with a single line. You push it together, pull it apart, then you wrap these two around each other, Reach down in and pull that loop up, pull it tight, you have a dropper loop. Now you tie another hook or fly on there and you use two flies at once. So we got all this knot stuff. Now how about the perfection loop? This is to tie a loop in a, in a leader material so you can tie another dropper to that other, other fly. And the, one of the simplest ways is to just wrap that around and pull that up through and you have a loop now 
if you wanted to do a loop-to-loop -loop connection with another material you basically run that material through there okay oops that not ain't holding basically you uh, will go through there let's see we'll go through there and bring this through here there we go and it makes a nice figure eight that's a loop-to-loop -loop connection what's nice about that is you can undo it if you wanted to change leader or get rid of that hook so that's a good little loop-to-loop -loop connection right there okay and there's a right and a wrong way for that and uh, you'll be able to see it when you tie it so that's it well that's it for me this week there's my big hook and we just did a bunch of knots we did the perfection loop right at the end we did the nail knot or the blood knot there's a blood knot, knot loop for a dropper there's the nail knot and we did the arbor knot of course where we attached our backing to the center of our reel okay so these knots are important to remember and they're important to learn because you're going to be changing flies on the stream you're going to need to be able to tie the clinch knot really fast sometimes you'll be fishing and the hatch will change so fast that you barely have enough time to change the fly okay if it takes you more than 30 seconds to to change the fly uh, you really need to practice that clinch knot it shouldn't take you much more than 30 seconds to put that fly on there uh, the other knots you can do at home okay you when you set your reel up this one needs a leader on it this one has a leader on it a tapered leader and this one doesn't have anything on it yet and uh, here's some fly line in a package that I'm going to be putting on on one of those here's another one scientific anglers uh, I try them all I try all the different lines um, you don't need to do that all you need is one one package of line and you want to take care of your fly line sometimes in the winter time I'll take my fly lines and and check them if you twist them and they're cracked they're no they're no longer any good they're just you could use it for practicing in the backyard grass really uh, ruin, can ruin a fly line so you so if you got an old fly line that's cracked and, and, and falling apart you use that in the backyard to practice but you don't want to use that on the river because that will sink and uh, and it won't cast very far so you'll have to get a new fly line and uh, or and, and another thing I do in the winter time is I'll take them and clean them and I'll actually uh, go through the whole line and clean it with uh, armor all is really good for fly line or in any one of those uh, they, there's a couple of different brands out there the, the plastic rejuvenator type products uh, armor all is the most common uh, and I'll just run my line through that and then I'll run it back through another dry rag to clean it and that makes it really slippery and it really sails out those guides so uh, it'll help you in your fishing when you get out there on the stream now as always I like to try to have uh, little giveaways here and there at different different times last week I gave away some uh, booklets that I had and I hope people enjoy those and this week I'm giving away one of my brand new riffles and waves hat okay it's got the little logo on there for riffles and waves the fly fishing show for kids of all ages okay so if you want one of these hats you got to be the first person to email me right now at avkurt at mac.com okay so so get on your computer and log in and send me an email saying that you saw the show and you want a hat a riffles and waves hat okay and uh, I'd like to also mention that uh, to, to make sure you mark your calendars for May 8th. May 8th is the annual Kids Fishing Derby at Shenango Valley State Park. And again, we're going to be giving out all kinds of prizes through the day. I'll be out there announcing some of the prizes, and I may bring my guitar and sing some goofy songs. And we're going to have fly casting out there. We may have a casting contest this year. We always have a coloring contest, and we have 
uh, basically it's it, you just go fishing and catch trout and take them home if you want um, it's a fun day we have uh, it cost a buck and it starts about 10 and goes till 1 or 2 and you want to get there early so you want to get there really about 8 o'clock to get a good spot because that lake gets pretty crowded after a while and uh, it's it's a fun day we we serve lunch around noon so all the everybody gets a hot dog and a bag of chips and a soda you know as long as supplies last you know um, we try to have a lots lots of hot dogs on hand and uh, just in case uh, we run out we'll go out and get some more if we have to and that would be the best of all situations is to have so many people out at the state park that we'd have to go get more food but anyway I hope to see you out there uh, look for me. I'll be clowning around somewhere and uh, bring your fishing poles, bring your parents, bring your neighbors, bring your grandma, grandpa, whatever. Come on out. It's a family day. It's a family fun day and it's it's a kids fishing derby for kids of all ages actually. Uh, the prizes are geared towards kids but uh, the parents and everybody else can have a good time too. We don't frown upon that at all. And I'd like to mention too that this year Dave Lemon from the DEC will be on hand. So, May 8th, at the Shenango Valley State Park only, it will be a free fishing day. Okay, so your mom and dad, brothers, and uh, if you're over the age of 16, you don't need a fishing license. If you're under the age of 16, you don't need one anyway. So, come on out to Shenango Valley State Park on May 8th and uh, uh, look me up. Say hi to me. You know, I'll be out there. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. Fishing down on a beaver kill just about a week ago. Fish started jumping, fish started rising, right in front of me, you know. So I tied on a skirt, skillet, stole fly, and cast it out onto the stream. Soon after that, a chop took the fly, and we were both headed downstream. Just about then, the trout turned around. in the air, he spit the fly out, this is what he said to me, hey there Mr. Big Shot Fly Fisher, as he started to grin, if you want to catch me, well you're gonna have to come back again. I'm running out of line and I won't take you home. Well, I always try to fish in the no kill suction whenever I can. I always find plenty big fish in the river. All you gotta do is cast. So the next time you get the trout, release them to the water again. So that the next time that you go there, you're always gonna find a friend. One more time, give me three steps. Give you that fish, you give me three steps. Four. Give me three steps, give me three steps, fishy, and you never see.